Hello and welcome back to our KSP career and in today's episode we shall be constructing a small rover and its deployer craft that we plan to use to explore the moon. So right, it will be a very small rover because it was supposed to be dropped by a 2.5 meter craft and I'm just going to be placing some uh, experiments on it and I will be placing, uh, increasing the data capacity and everything. This rover will be permanently located on the surface of, uh, on the surface of uh, Moon. However, uh, I plan to jam it packed with experiments, battery charges, Kerbal Engineer and everything else. So, without further ado, let's cram in all those gorgeous experiments that I fully plan to use, reuse and send, hopefully, a metric boatload of science back to Kerbin. Yes, that is the plan. So, as you can see, um, contrary to the, you know, uh, contrary to the existing practices of the Kerbalism, I'm actually dumping a metric banana scrap ton of the uh, experiments on this rover, but I don't plan to execute them same time and it should be, have enough uh, juice and battery to perpetually collect the experiments and hopefully send them onwards to Kerbin. Yes. So. Without further ado, let's place in the mystery goo, which, because I'm thinking to send at least some of the signs. I don't know if it will be able to collect the samples, though. Maybe. Who knows? Maybe. Alright, so I'm actually thinking of... I, I thought about placing the actual uh, decoupler, but why would I need a coupler? That would suggest that I want to recouple it, which I don't. So I think rather stack separator and another battery source and then everything should be hunky-dory. Now, Moon, I want to be make sure that, well, I want to make sure that Moon is 12 million meters and I need an antenna that will be able to have a good enough signal strength and fast enough data transfer to ensure that we can actually transfer all the data back to Kerbin. So I'm actually planning to use multiple antennas and see if we can, you know, double the capacity see current 4.3 2.2 however we'll see all right anyway that's fine and i plan to uh put some better antennas if i can however we will take a look at it right so antenna here antenna there those would be now we have 4.8 kilobytes per second that's good enough i need somewhere to place the solar panel oh I, i'm gonna move the antennas ain't i yeah i'm gonna move the antennas all right fair enough uh that's good enough now let's place it here there we go All right, so let's see the wheels. Making sure that it steers with the front wheels, maybe with the front two wheels, I'm not exactly sure. Let's start the simulation, see that it works. All right, so we can drive it. It goes left, right, all right. It can do some delta V. All right, that looks, I mean, good enough in my book. Oh. I need to sort out the yeah yeah all right fixed because I've as you can see I've changed the aspect ratio it's no longer 21 by 9 so it's now regular 1080p so instead I've decided that I needed to just correct those things I mean a lot of you decided that I mean a, a little bit wider is just too wide and I mean it's not visible I completely understand that guys so and your votes are really important to me so from further now it will be just 10 old good 1080p hope you guys enjoy it i might want to actually scale down the ui a little bit because it's a little tad too big for my taste it's clogging up it feels like you know going back to the days of uh, 1024 by 768 right so that i think is good now i want to move the attachment point of the rover on the top so i can use it as a sub assembly and then we shall be designing the launcher system or actually the deployer system fair enough all right all 
all right fair enough and also I have decided to put in the Bon Voyage so that we can actually assist and go with it yeah all right fair enough all right a little bit of lights you know front we put the spotlights white and at the rear we're gonna be placing the regular lights red just to make it ever so nicer and I mean I want to make it look kind of cool okay Geiger counter I can actually place it here and I want to place all of these experiments nicely aligned so that they're not lopsided or something like that all right change the light change the light looks good save and back as a sub assembly because we want it to be updated sub assembly right all right Now, back in the VAB, we want to be designing a launcher system, which is actually kind of cool, and I hope it will be fun. All right, no problem. We'll see. So, I want to be placing first the essentials in. Then we're gonna be. Uh, then we're gonna be placing the essentials part info. Let me just double check. We want to be going on with the moon landed and we want to make sure that we have everything what we're supposed to have scrubber pressure control water recycler and dump the carbon dioxide if we need to yeah right closing the shroud making sure that everything is hunky dory let's place the parachutes there we go for the return you always when you're designing your craft you want to plan backwards basically first what is landing Second, what is coming back from the moon back to Kerbin? Then, what is landing on the moon? What is going back up from the moon? And all those things you have to take into account when you're designing a craft. I mean, I don't intend this to be a full-on tutorial, but I'm actually placing a couple of you know, repair kits, ex EVA experiments, and a few, you know, breaking ground experiments, because I think it, this would be cool to actually deploy them on the surface of the moon. Yes, after all, when we are there, might as well, you know, deploy some experiments and get some science over time. Shielding, I want to be cranking up that one as much as possible. Wastewater, not nitrogen and whatnot. All right, good. Let's just quickly check. We have everything for a couple of years worth of reserves. That's good. Let's place the heat shield. I want to be placing a thicker heat shield, I think, because if I will be returning back from the interplanetary, not sorry from the moon trajectory I want to make sure that I have those things corrected spacecraft separator hmm that's weird all right let's put two SAS units just to make sure that it is you know stable and I want to be placing a oh, service tank well uh, this looks kind of cool but I'm looking more for actual cargo bay do we have a cargo bay somewhere uh, no ah then I can just use this tank that's fine and then I want to be placing a lander engines. Oh, there's a the cargo bay. All right, so we stack in the cargo bay. That should be good enough. Let's cram in a couple of batteries. Let's cram in a couple of, you know, experiments. Science Junior, because when we once we landed, we want to be taking as many experiments as we possibly can. So we will be, you know, collecting some science after all. And I'm actually thinking this lander can can actually use... Hold on, I want to be taking one of these experiments units. Oh, what I'm gonna drop? EVA experiments kit? Maybe. Yeah, let's place it here. And I want to leave one spot open in the inventory because you cannot just dump things, so yeah. Okay, batteries. There we go. Magnetometer. I'm just cramming a lot of experiments. Hopefully it will be fine to deploy a few of them in different situations. <clears throat> then we want to be uh, looking into the lander engines and the decoupler, of course. So um, lander engines. What's the thrust to weight on the moon with these? 6.8. Okay, I think we're good. Landing legs. I want to be placing the big ones, you know, the SpaceX ones. All right, there we go. I'm just gonna put all the damper strength and everything because those will uh, landing legs will give me enough leeway in terms of uh, being able to dump the uh, the smaller 
you know, the, the rover from beneath. That's the idea. Alright. Placing the ladder, making sure it's long enough. There we go, two, three, nice. Alright, beautiful. Now I want to be deploying the lander from beneath, so I have to just figure out how I'm gonna do this. <clears throat> Engine plate? Maybe I could do that. Or I could be placing something else. Let's see, um, decoupler? No. Maybe a nice, a nice, you know, protective shell in terms of like this, airstream, yes. Interstage nodes on, okay, rover, I'm placing the rover below, that looks good. This is what I want to be building. Okay, and I'm gonna place the landing leg slightly below so that the rover has ample of room to, you know, go down. Right, so, that thing said, I want an SAS module somewhere around here, which will then later on decouple and, you know, look fine. I'm a little bit worried how it looks though. Hmm. Sides, ejection force. I don't want this node to linger, that's what I'm actually a little bit worried about. Well, we'll see. Hopefully it will work. Alright. Vacuum, Kerbin, I need <clears throat> a good transfer stage that will be going to the moon and then another plate which will be going up. Okay, so I'm, as always I'm gonna use the Bagora, I'm gonna use this launcher vehicle, alright, and then I'm just sorting out the staging. However, here I'm not really sold on this idea. Hold on, what? Okay, clearly that's not what I was thinking. So, I don't want this many interstage nodes, so if I place these and I close it, will that... Oh boy. Alright, hopefully this will work. Right. So, that thing being said, let's now make sure that we <clears throat> put enough... Well, of everything. Right, so check your staging as always. You know, guys, this is kind of the most important part. Deployer lander, everything looks fine. Making sure that my staging is correct. And I'm thinking of putting some in the data capacity, being able to, you know, configure in our experiments, light, might, and whatnot, telemetry report, because maybe we can do some science as we are going up because why not? Now, that being said, all right, now let's see, uh, do we have this, we have it, good. All right, apply settings. Well, I'm not overly concerned, I'm gonna have the at least the ability to arm the chutes and hopefully make this thing land at some point. Some antennas, good. Aerial micro antenna. I am thinking of, let's say, boosters. I want to make sure that I put two very nice, you know, thick boosters. There we go. All right. This time I'm going for the regular, you know, Falcon with some boosters. I don't want to go for, for Falcon heavy look and feel. There we go. That looks kind of cool. Okay, what's my thrust to weight on liftoff? 2.25 that looks pretty good I mean it is a little bit on the hefty side though but I won't be putting it full throttle from the beginning so I think that looks about right let's just auto strut everything have some antennas you know making sure that the action groups are here There we go, and I think I want to be placing these guys, launch clamps, because the last one actually played the trick on me. So let's try it. Three, two, one, go! Look at it go. Goes beautiful, doesn't it? All right, and when it comes to it, my you know, liquid fuel engine is at 20% thrust, which I think is still way too much, but I think it will work. 
Alright, so... Ascent looks nominal. I just want to make sure that the detachment is going well and it looks, you know, fine going to space. It's just a simulation after all. Alright. Detaching the boosters. Igniting the core engine with full throttle, which gives us again 2.5 or 2.25 meters, oh sorry, thrust to weight ratio, which is actually way more than we need. So it's perfect. All right, let's just now <clears throat> try and find the optimum orbit. Here is KSP cracking pulling jokes on me. All right, 100 by 100 orbit, I think that's good enough. And we do everything on the eighth stage, which is good. A total of 100 and, f well, 1430 meters. Let's call it like that. All right, so, good. That thing being said, let's do this. Burns ever so nicely. Stepan Kruchinkin and Svetlana Oprichuka are actually my test pilots for today, but yeah, it looks cool. Alright, so that being said, let's now try and see if we can decouple this thing. Looks kind of good. That works. The core stage, can it return back to Kerbin? I would certainly hope so. Simulation active, okay, turn around and then, you know, hopefully everything should be fine. All right, that simulation, I was trying to use FMRS, but apparently I cannot do that for some reason, whatever it is. All right, doesn't matter. That being said, let's just quickly check this guy out, that it looks nice. We can decouple the rover. Right. Open up the antenna, solar panels, and that's it. Right. That thing being said, let's. The only thing remaining is to actually order it. So, with that thing being said, hope you guys liked the today's episode. As always, press a like, leave a like, and I shall be seeing you in the next episode. Thank you very much for watching. This is Groundworks signing off.